Hello again and welcome to my latest video here, my second of the day, believe it or not. Uh, this one's going to be kind of a short, almost like a diary or a vlog about Joey Gatewood. I want to talk about him a little bit. Uh, Joey elected and, or announced or made it clear this morning that he was going to be entering the transfer portal and heading out of Auburn. And this is a very, uh, I, I don't want to say it's a surprising development from somebody like myself who covers the team and understands the situation, but I think it really potentially throws a little bit of a wrench into the system at Auburn insofar as Joey was more than just your average backup. He had a lot of upside, and he was a guy they were using in certain uh, packages currently. So to me, he was more than a QB2, and I think him leaving is going to be bad for Auburn insofar as now, Bo Nix, who has certainly had his fair share of problems this year, particularly in the big games, now they have to really worry about him not getting injured because if he goes down, there's no Joey Gatewood there to kind of pick up the slack, and it's going to be going down to Cord Sandberg, who I kind of see as a little bit of a project. I mean, he's an older player. Uh, the limited times we've had a chance to see him play, he's been just so-so. And I just wonder if, you know, something really nasty goes down in the game, if they just start going wildcat or something like that, the way Kentucky does. I mean, Javaris Davis has some background as a quarterback. DJ Williams was a high school quarterback. Obviously, Booby can do some things. Uh, there's a lot of different things they can do, I guess. But nothing is going to compare to Joey Gatewood. Now, it's interesting to me that he would leave in the middle of the season. And I'll tell you why. He was committed to Auburn two and a half years before he signed, okay? Back when he was a sophomore and, and Gus just said, I really like this kid. I feel really good that he's going to grow into somebody that I'm going to really enjoy in our system. And as Joey got older, more and more schools were interested in him, but he stayed pretty steadfast with Auburn. He ended up signing with them uh, in 2018. He redshirted during the 2018 season while uh, Jarrett Stidham was finishing his time out at Auburn and Bo Nix was a senior at Pinson Valley. And so now they get in a competition this spring. It's neck and neck. They get into the fall. It's still kind of neck and neck, but it looks like Bo Nix is the better passer. And eventually, on August 20th, Malzahn announces that Bo Nix has won the job and Joey Gatewood is going to be the QB2. You know right then and there that Joey's time at Auburn is probably going to be ending before too long because he feels like, and I think it's a reasonable position, that he's going to be a starter in the SEC or somewhere. You know, he's a starter. And yeah, I'm okay. If I don't win this competition, they'll have a package for me. I'll get some snaps. But he's not going to be here long term. My thought was he would finish the season, transfer out, and then and he's going to have to sit out anyway. So he get to his next place and just kind of go through the motions again and wait it out. Unless he goes to JUCO and then goes that route, it's possible. But Joey decided today that he's going to wrap it up and, and get things, get his name in the portal and start getting things in, in motion for his next stop. I am surprised by that. I thought a guy who had been with Malzahn that long would probably just go ahead and stick it out for the season, and a guy who had such affinity for Auburn. Because Joey, he's a good guy. He's a good kid. He's a friendly kid. Uh, he's not someone who's vindictive or mean, and I don't think anything that you've seen today is coming from a place of vindictiveness or anger. I think it's just kind of disappointment. But it's the same disappointment that's been there since he lost the job, and it's reasonable for him to be disappointed. And I thought that he worked hard in practice and gave it his all and did exactly what he told Malzahn he would do. He'd keep competing. But there comes a point, and I think it's a reasonable spot for Joey, when Bo struggles as much as he has in the Florida game, and that's a game when Joey didn't play at all, and then the game at LSU last weekend and Joey got one snap, if Bo's going to have all that trouble and Joey doesn't even get a shot, at some point he's got to kind of look in the mirror and say, I don't even have a chance here. And he may actually not have a chance because, and you guys know who watch our postgame show, The Brain Drain, I advocated very vocally on that show after the LSU game that Gus should have given Joey a chance to play because Bo was flatlined. And I've asked Gus about it semi-privately. Did you ever consider playing Joe? And he said no. It's because he feels like Bo is a great investment and he wants to give Bo every chance and every opportunity possible to get better. Even when he's flatline at Florida, even when he's flatline at LSU, 
keep playing and learn how to dig yourself out of it. It's not that Gus doesn't like Joey. He just feels like Bo is a better investment. Now, is that the right call? We're going to find out because Joey Gatewood's going to go somewhere else. There's going to be several schools that are going to want to give him an opportunity. He'll have his choice. And, you know, two years down the road, we'll see what Joey Gatewood can become. If you want my opinion, I don't think he was ready to be QB1 right now. So, based on the information that I have and what I've seen, both in practice, hearing people who are in practice, what I've seen in games, I don't think Joey Gatewood was going to take over the job from Bo Nix right now. But, listen, when Joey gets a year out, let's say he goes to JUCO or he sits out a year, he's going to learn a lot from that. And he's going to learn, I think it's going to make him even more hungry to be a good football player. You look at Cam Newton when he was at Florida. I mean, he wasn't a particularly notable player. And then when he gets kicked out of Florida and he ends up at Blinn, he knows he's that close to the to the abyss. And he worked his butt off. And he became the player, he maximized his potential. He became the player that people thought in a perfect world Cam Newton could become. I think that can happen for Joey Gatewood. I don't think that he's going to be the next Cam Newton. I don't think he runs that physically. I don't think he has that thirst for trucking a linebacker. But I definitely think that he's got ability. I think he's got a great attitude. And I'm looking forward to him uh, having a career somewhere else and being able to be the quarterback one that he wants to be and he deserves to be. So no hate from this Auburn beat rider, I'll tell you that. There's going to be some people out there that say you shouldn't quit on your team. You know, I don't know how I feel about that, but I'll know this. Joey Gatewood's a good guy. He loves his teammates. He really likes Auburn. He felt like this was the best thing for him. And if he can't get his heart in it right now, I don't think he should be out there anyway. And so with that, He's got to let it go. How does it affect Auburn? Well, Bo Nix, they're going to have to be real careful with the way they run him now. I was thinking they might run him a little bit more in the games against Georgia and Alabama. Now, not so much. So the pressure is going to be on Bo now to make better throws and to be a more consistent element in the passing game because they're going to be trying to protect Bo. There's no doubt about that. Cord Sandberg probably gets some snaps. Booby gets some snaps, et cetera, et cetera. Recruiting-wise, uh, they have a young man by the name of Garnett committed for the next class. Not sure about his value as a quarterback. He's kind of an unknown to me because his team's not very good and he doesn't get as many opportunities maybe as some of the other guys that are high-profile quarterback recruits. I don't know if somebody would be willing to come in here with Bo Nix as the man like he is. He's, I mean, he's only a freshman right now. He'll be a sophomore next year. It's kind of like in the basketball team where when Jared Harper got good, you know, they had trouble finding a quality guy to come in here and be Jared Harper's backup or compete with Jared Harper, at least in theory. They got Javon McCormick, who was kind of a low-profile Juco guy. Ended up being a tremendous player last year, no doubt. But it's a tricky spot. I don't think they're going to be able to go out and get like a, a transfer or anything because that would put a, a ceiling right on top of Bo Nix that they don't want to do. So it's going to be very interesting to see. Uh, what they do for the next recruiting class. Now, in 2021, they have a young man by the name of McLaughlin who looks really good to me, uh, but he's still a little ways out. you got to get him to the finish line, get him here, get him signed, and then figure out what you've got. But by that time, Bo Nix is going to be a junior, and he'll be on his way, and it's not going to be a big deal for Aaron McLaughlin to uh, bide his time and get better as Bo finishes it out. Anyway, guys, thank you for listening to my opinion. If you guys have a different opinion, let me know in the comments. I know there's some people out there who think it's a selfish move by Joey to do it right now, but if your heart's not in it, man, you got to cut it off. That's my opinion anyway. Thank you for taking the time to uh, watch this video. If you enjoy what we do here, please subscribe to the channel. And if you like what I had to say or just the quality of the video or whatever, give me a thumbs up. Until next time, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars.